place where it is comfortable for you to do so, please close your eyes and begin to take some long, slow, deep, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, feel more light and peace entering your body and your mind. With every exhale, just let go and drop away everything that is tense and that you do not want. Inhaling peace and exhaling, letting go. We picture ourselves on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. In the center of our circle, a bonfire is blazing forth and it's lighting us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this light is the light of perfect love and perfect trust. And it burns away easily and gently everything that is not like itself, leaving us safe and pure and peaceful. Into this sacred space we now invite and invoke the presence of our Creator. To many of us, our Creator reveals themselves to be a God and Goddess, a Father and Mother. Into this sacred space we also invite the presence of our teachers, our angels, our guides. We dedicate the time that we are spending together to each other and to them. And we ask that we be guided as we walk upon the way to become happier, more helpful, more loving, more peaceful, more tranquil, more prosperous, and more successful people. Thank you very much. And if it is appropriate for you to do so, out loud you can join me in saying the words, Blessed Be. We've talked about the mental shield in the past. When we have our defenses up, it's very difficult for magic to work. Because when our defenses are up, our thought forms that we project outward don't project anywhere very easily because of the mental shield that we have put up around us. This shield is held in place by tension, and it is tension itself. Tension and defensiveness are antithetical to effective magic. And so in order for our magic to be effective, it's necessary that we learn how to create a space or infrastructure within our own minds and bodies of peace and relaxation and faith. One of the things that happens is that we're not sure that our magic is going to be powerful, and that in and of itself is a tense thought. And so these tense thoughts can perpetuate failure. So one of the more important skills as a magician is the skill of learning to relax and to stay in a a state of relaxation for an extended period of time. And it's one of the skills that is rarely practiced or taught. When you're learning magic, usually most people are more interested in the colors and the candles and the incenses and the, the magic words and the techniques. And those are all fine, but none of that really does anything for you if you are not in a state where things can occur. Because remember what our goal is. It's to build a thought form that is accepted by our deep mind. And when a thought form that we have constructed is accepted by our deep mind, it comes to pass. And if our deep mind does not accept a thought form, it does not come to pass. Now, it's very challenging sometimes to allow our deep mind to accept a thought form unless we are in a state of utter relaxation. So, If our need or our desire is a financial one, then we need that financial thought form to be accepted by our deep mind. If our desire is something to do with health, then we have to build our thought form of health, which is then accepted by our deep mind. And then the deep mind does what it needs to do to bring these things about. Once we've deposited that thought form successfully into the deep mind, our work is done. In fact, doing too much more casting can sometimes even delay things. And that's why we say when you have a sense of peace and certainty, 
that your spell is coming about, that's the time to stop casting because that's an indication to you by your deep mind, I've got this. I've got this. I understand now. I've, I've got this. I, I have this thought form. I'm on it. You leave it to me. So when, when we cast a spell very frequently, we need to repeat our casting process daily. Sometimes we do, you know, a three-day spell or a five-day spell or a seven-day spell or a nine-day spell or just however many days until we get that indication, that communication from our deep mind. And that deep mind communication comes to us as a feeling that all is well, a feeling that this thing has already happened, there's peace, and there's certainty about it. So, one of the ways that you can get those thought forms into the deep mind and know for sure that your, that your mental shield is down is working magic as you go to sleep to actually drop thought forms into your deep mind as you are falling asleep. We've talked about these kinds of things in several of my courses, but it's good to just look at it as a standalone technique. A lot of times I'll use this technique of casting or building thought forms as I'm going to sleep as an adjunct to other spell casting processes, but you can use it as its own process. So depending on what your method happens to be, we take whatever our thought form is and we condense it into an easy to remember phrase or incantation. Sometimes a rhyme is a good idea. If you can turn your affirmation into a jingle, into a rhyme, into a ditty, that it's easier to remember and it's easier for you to drop that into your deep mind as you are going to sleep. But it's not necessary. It can be anything. But just a small, short little phrase. And the idea is to repeat your phrase or your jingle over and over and over again as you're dropping into sleep. And it's not just repeating it like a parrot. It's feeling it. It's seeing it. It's being one with your desire as you're repeating that little phrase again and again as you go to sleep. If you're working on a money spell, uh, you could just repeat the word wealth as you're going to sleep and seeing your desire come to pass and feeling the wealth, feeling that, that kind of happiness and joy that all is working out. And as you're dropping off to sleep, if you can just keep that that thought form on a loop in your mind, whether it be visual visual or a silent audio in your mind or both, when we fall asleep, that mental shield has to come down because there's no more tension to hold it in place. That mental tension is gone because the mind has fallen asleep. So as we fall asleep at night and we have our thoughts of our goal and we have that little mental mantra that we're repeating again and again and again, we fall asleep to it. Now, as you wake up in the morning, if you can remember, and if you, you know, sometimes I put a little post-it note by my bed or something on my alarm, if I've got an alarm clock that I have to use that day or whatever, so that I remember before I get up and get out and just become alert that I, that I return to that same mantra and that same visual, and that same feeling of what it is that I want. And I return to that, so I bring it up again as I come out of sleep. So I've not only dropped that thought form into my deep mind as I was falling asleep, I have reconstituted it as I'm coming out of sleep. So I'm dropping it again into my deep mind as that mental shield is just naturally down. And I don't have to worry as much about keeping that witch's trance in those states because the, uh, the, the mental shield is already down because I've been asleep or I'm going to sleep. Like I said, I usually use it as an adjunct to other spell casting, but it really can kick things into high gear for us. And it's such a wasted time of day for most people. There's a huge opportunity there every night and every morning to get so much done that we don't even tend to notice what we're going to sleep with. 
lot of times we have worries or upsets or just silly ideas that have no real bearing on anything important in our lives that we have in our minds, just unconscious blather basically in our minds as we're dropping down into sleep, not recognizing that those are going to be seeds of thought that we are planting into our deep mind as we are going into sleep. And same thing as we're coming back back up out of sleep. Now, I'm one of those people that doesn't wake up in a great mood, naturally. I just don't. That's when my fear is up, and that's when my moods are up, is when I'm coming up out of sleep. And I learned that that's a wonderful time to clean up a lot of that stuff before I come into my day. Rather than suppress it, or rather than pretend like I'm not feeling those things, I notice them as they're coming up, and If I'm working on something already, I gently transfer those ideas that are are just sort of naturally happening in my mind as I'm awakening, and I transfer them into my thought form, into my mantra, into that feeling of success, so that I don't even wake up and get up out of my bed until I have oriented my mind properly. Do you see that the The orienting of our mind as we are entering and exiting sleep is such a powerful process, and it's such a missed opportunity for most people, even those that that profess to to practice magic. But it's also that time when a lot of our ego thought forms are developed because we aren't paying attention to our thinking process as we are entering and exiting this very, very powerful time of day when our mental shield is naturally lowered. So what I recommend that you do is take one week and one thought form. One week and one thought form. And you just say, okay, for the next seven days, I'm going to watch my thoughts as I enter sleep and remember to watch my thoughts as I'm exiting sleep in the morning. And I'm going to focus on this one thought form. And you don't even have to do any other kind of spellcasting process. You're just going to do this. I'm just going to focus this one thought form. You you can decide what it is, just as long as it's something you really, really want. Your desire must be there. So it's something that you really want, something that's really important to you, something that's within your sphere of influence, and concoct some sort of simple, easy mental mantra that you can repeat as you're going to sleep and coming back out of sleep that focuses you on that thought form. And just take note, just notice the difference in your overall attitudes during the day and on the manifestation of success within this thought form. So in other words, not only are you going to be noticing a difference just in the energy that you carry with you because you've taken charge of your mind through those two very, very important and somewhat vulnerable times of day, so that you're taking charge of your mind when you're falling asleep and waking up and therefore empowering yourself. Uh, So you're going to just, hopefully, most of you are going to notice how much just generally better you feel. But in addition to that, notice how things are changing within the realm of that thought form, that specific thought form. So if it's a financial goal that you have that you're bringing into sleep and pulling back out of sleep with, notice just the general trend in the way things start to work, how you feel, especially how you feel about that thing. You know, if you start to get that sense of peace and certainty as you are just in your your day-to-day life, you won't need to cast like that anymore. And you'll just notice that that that's that sense of peace and certainty about this situation or about this goal is an indication to you from your deep mind that manifestation is imminent. It's coming. And that's exciting. Uh, many times when people start to learn to, to work like this, to work with their sleep, they wonder why they hadn't been doing it all along. Because it seems to cut through so much nonsense. You get right to the heart of things and really start to speed up your progress in so many different areas. That that old idea, uh, I think it's from the 16th century, that night brings good counsel. It's another way that you can use this. It's not only just for spell casting, but for getting answers. So you have a problem with your 
um, I don't know, that you have to figure out. You need answers for something. Like say say something at work. It's like there's a there's this thing going on with with a maybe a computer program, and nobody seems to be able to figure out what the problem is, and you're trying to figure it out with them, and so you've you've kind of exhausted all of the possibilities as to what this problem is. It's just really stumping everybody. And so you just bring this into sleep with you in the same way that you're using this for spell casting. And, and maybe you condense your desire for that into a, a mantra, um, like, I have the answer, I have the answer, I have the answer. And you just repeat that over and over as you're falling asleep with this feeling that the answer is there. You can even see a little visual um, a movie in your mind where you you go in and you tell your coworkers, "I figured it out. I figured it out." You know, and you you just take that into sleep with you, and then you, as soon as you start waking up the next morning, as soon as you remember, you're going to bring that back out of sleep with you, and do that for several nights, for how, however long it takes, until you get that sense of peace and certainty about it. And very often, the answer will just come out of nowhere when you're not even expecting it. That's usually the best time is you're not going to you're not looking for it. You're thinking about something else. And all of a sudden it just bub, 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 bubbles up to the surface. And there you've got your answer. And you go in and you tell your coworkers, I got it. <laughs> just like in your visual, I figured it out. And, uh, and then you have your success. Sometimes if you can't find something, you've lost something and you know it somewhere, you can bring that desire into sleep with you. And you can just say, I, you know, maybe your, your mantra is, I found it, I found it, I found it. And you just see yourself finding this item and being so happy as you're going into sleep. And you remember to keep that mantra and that visual as you're coming back out of sleep. And you don't think about it intently during the day. You just let it bubble up and it'll bubble up and you'll just get this, this flash and you'll say, I know where it is. And you don't know why it's in the, in the uh, vegetable crisper in the in the refrigerator. That's not where your glasses go, but you got that visual that that's where they are. And you go and you see, yep, you must have put them in there when you were unloading the groceries for some silly reason. And there it is. It's, it's right there, right in your deep mind, ready for you. But see, had you not learned how to work with that natural time when your mental shield has gone down, has been lowered, then you might not have ever been able to access that part of the deep mind that already knew where those glasses were, that already knew this, the solution to that problem, that already knew how to create that money, that already knew you know, how, how, to, how to find the, the right doctor or whatever your problem is, whatever your goal happens to be. So you're, you're spellcasting in your sleep. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's funny because sometimes it becomes so easy for you to find solutions and to get your needs met doing this kind of a, a, a process that some people say, yeah, but I don't want to do that because then all the fun spellcasting stuff is gone. <laughs> Because it's so easy. It's so easy. All I have to do is think of it as I'm going to sleep and think of it as I'm waking up and the whole thing works, you know? But that's a good thing. And and uh, you can still do all the other stuff. I mean, it's not, this is, it's not like you can't still, you know, cast your spells. But what a wonderfully powerful opportunity each and every day that most of us pass up because we don't even know that we can do this kind of a thing and be very, very successful in it. So like I said, take seven days, take one thought form, and and just do it. Just do it. Now, maybe you're going to get that sense of peace and serenity and, and certainty about this to where you can stop casting long before seven days, in which case you can, you can do another thought form for the rest of the seven days. But take a good seven days and notice that you're going to take charge of that time as you're moving in and out of sleep. And notice just the overall difference in your general attitude and your general life as a result of just taking charge of that time. Because not only are you taking charge of that time so that you can have practical results, you're taking charge of that time so that you are no longer um, allowing ego thought forms to just randomly be dropped into your deep mind so that they, they can create more problems for you. Because I guarantee you, if you're not watching your thoughts, your ego is. If you're not watching your thoughts, your ego is. And it's just randomly and automatically on autopilot, just 
churning out negative thoughts, churning out thoughts of separation, churning out thoughts of things that you do not want. So it's just as easy for you to take charge of those thoughts yourself and turn them into successes as it is for you to just go to sleep with nonsense going through your mind so that you have more nonsense to deal with as in your waking hours. Take charge of your time as you're entering and exiting sleep and notice the difference. That one little change in your daily routine isn't going to cost you any extra time. It might be a little bit of an effort for you to, to, to keep focused as you're falling asleep and to remember to focus as you're waking back up. It may take a little mental effort, but it's not going to take any extra time. You got to fall asleep and wake up anyway. You may as well do those things consciously and get the full benefit of your mind being focused. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me. I so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be. 